Mike Panaki here with Network Protocol Specialists. And in our video on Wireshark today, what we're going to be looking at is preparing and applying filters. So if you've watched in our previous videos, we've showed you how to set up a capture with Wireshark, and we've shown you how to do some basic filters on protocols and so on. In this one, we're going to look at how we can select fields within a packet and then create filters based on those fields. So if we look at the packets we've captured, we see that up here in the top, we've got our summary window that shows us our source and destination addresses. It shows us things are like our delta time, the time between each packet, and some information about the packet. In the center section, we have our detail pane. And our detail pane shows us a detailed decode of this particular packet that we selected up here. So for instance, we can select this one, which is a DNS packet, and we can see that we have our information about the frame. We've got that it's an Ethernet Type 2 frame, source and destination addresses. It's using the Internet Protocol. It's using the User Datagram Protocol. And it's sending DNS information. We can expand any one of these sections and start drilling in and taking a look at information about what's in this packet. So in this case, we can see that we've sent a query. And if we go down a little bit further, we're looking for the pointer record for this particular IP address. So that gives us some information about that. Now, down in this very bottom section, this is our hex window. And so for those of you that do your checkbooks in binary, you can use this section to take a look at the hex representation of the data. So if I look at this transaction ID right here, I click on that 3132, it's going to highlight that data down here. So what we want to do is we want to go ahead and create a filter based on some information inside one of these packets. So I'm going to come in and click on this ARP packet right here and I'm going to expand the Ethernet 2 section and we see right here we've got a type field that says ARP 0806. Now there's two things that we can do once we've clicked on this field. We can right click on it and we can come in here and say apply as filter. And if we select selected what it will do is it will take the information that we've highlighted, it will apply it as a filter, and filter all the frames based on that. So now what we find is when we apply that, it will show us all of the ARP packets that we see. I'm going to go ahead and clear that and go back to this particular frame. That's great if we just want to filter on that one field. But let's say I want to filter on a couple of different fields. What I can do in this case is I can come in, I can click on this ARP field right here, say prepare as filter. Now what's different between preparing as filter and applying as filter is when I say prepare as filter and I click on selected, it will put that filter information up here, but it won't apply the filter. So now I can say, you know what? I'm interested in this source address. So if I select that source address and I say prepare as filter and selected, It'll create a filter saying, I want to see all ARP packets that are from this source address. So really, we can do a couple things here. One is we can create very complicated filters. And also, if you ever have any question about what the filter syntax should look like for a display filter, this is a great way to build a filter and see what that syntax looks like. So now we can come in, we can click on Apply, and it'll apply this filter to all of the packets that we have in our capture buffer. So this is how we can use the apply and prepare to create display filters. I find that using the prepare works really well because if we want to tweak that just a little bit, we can prepare it, fill that filter information in, and then click apply. So I hope this helps you in your network troubleshooting and stay tuned for more videos from us.